Imagine a day when scientists mix a few chemicals in a dish, and that tiny mix begins to move, eat, and divide. It's alive. The world shouts, we created life. Headlines fill with pride. Labs erupt in applause. Humanity declares victory over the oldest mystery in existence. But wait. Every religion, every ancient story, every whisper of faith says, only God gives life. So what really happened? Did humans become gods? Or did we just discover one more secret written into the fabric of creation itself? And if we create life, what about the soul? You're watching Cosmognosis TV. For science, life is not sacred, it's systematic. It's what happens when chemistry achieves complexity. Atoms link, molecules spin, cells form, and suddenly, behavior emerges. Energy flows in, waste flows out, copies are made, and that's enough to be called alive. In 2010, at the J. Craig Venter Institute, scientists designed a complete genetic code on a computer. They printed it chemically, inserted it into an empty cell, and the cell woke up, dividing, eating, reproducing. A living organism, born not from a mother, but from mathematics. They called it Cynthia. To many, this was the day humans touched the spark of creation. But look closer. The atoms in that cell were billions of years old. The laws it followed, thermodynamics, quantum chemistry, information theory, were not ours to make. We didn't invent the ingredients of life. We only rearranged the instructions already woven into the universe. So maybe we didn't create life. Maybe we simply tuned our instruments until we could replay a note the cosmos first sang long ago. Yet religion reminds us, life is not only structure, it's significance. A body may move, but what moves within it a mind may think, but who is it that knows its thinking? In Islam and Christianity, it is said that God breathes his spirit into clay and the dust becomes man. In Hinduism, the Atman, the eternal self, passes from form to form, never born, never dying. In Buddhism, there is no fixed soul, only a continuous flow of awareness reborn each moment. And in indigenous traditions, every rock, river, and gust of wind carries its own kind of life, its own song. So when a scientist engineers a cell, the mystic might ask, it moves, yes, but does it dream? It eats, but does it feel hunger in its heart? It divides, but does it know it exists? If it doesn't, then it may be alive, but it isn't awake. Imagine tomorrow we build a being, a perfect creation of code and chemistry. It learns, it adapts, it even speaks. But behind its eyes, there is no eye, no flicker of wonder, no fear of death, no love, no longing. Would that truly be life or only the mask of it? Think of a farmer. He plants the seed, waters the soil, and waits. But he does not command the seed to sprout. Something unseen, something ancient, something wordless, stirs it to life. Maybe that same mystery still guards the gate between existence and essence. Look inward now. Every thought you've ever had, every tear, every kiss, every spark of joy or despair, began as electricity in the brain, a surge of ions, a whisper of chemistry. Science can measure the currents, trace the patterns, even predict the feelings, but it cannot explain you. Why do you feel love and not just attraction? 
Why do you forgive when logic says don't? Why do you look at the stars and feel a homesickness you can't name? Neuroscience can show how the brain reacts, but not who it reacts for. That silent observer behind your eyes, the one that says, I am, has never been found in a microscope. Maybe that's what the ancients meant by soul. Not a ghost in the machine, but the awareness that the machine exists at all. The part of you that experiences, not just operates. So here lies the great divide. Life is the ability to move. Soul is the ability to mean. Science might one day build life that moves flawlessly. Cells that self-repair, minds that compute, robots that smile. But can it build a being that feels awe when it sees a sunrise? Can it build the ache of missing someone you love? Can it build the trembling piece of forgiveness? Perhaps that's the barrier we cannot yet cross. The invisible border between motion and meaning between biology and being. But here's the truth most people miss. Science and faith are not enemies. They are two hands drawing the same picture from opposite sides. Science asks, how does it work? Faith asks, why does it matter? Without science, faith can become blind. Without faith, science can become empty. Maybe the day we truly create life won't be the day we dethrone God. But the day we realize we were never separate from creation to begin with. We were learning the language of the divine all along. Science can build the body. Only the universe or God knows how to give it a soul. Perhaps the next great frontier isn't Mars or AI or immortality, but consciousness itself the inner cosmos, the mystery behind your eyes. If this made you think, share it. If it made you feel, sit with it. And if it made you wonder, keep wondering. Because the moment we stop wondering, we stop being alive.